Hello Liberty families. I'm Stephen Baranowski, Associate Principal. And I'm Gary Moeller, Principal here at Liberty. Next week we will conduct a necessary drill to help ensure student safety in the event that there is an active threat on our campus. We conduct this annual drill so we can be prepared to respond to any situation that may arise here at school. When carrying out a drill to respond to an active threat, we understand the need for caution and sensitivity while working with our students. At the same time, recent tragedies also emphasize the absolute need for us to continue with this learning. Over the years, our response to an active threat to school safety has evolved as incidents of tragedy have increased around our country. We have worked with local and regional law enforcement as well as guidance from the Department of Homeland Security to help guide our practices on how we respond to and train for an active threat. By sharing these practices with you, we hope it will be reassuring to hear that these topics are being addressed with your child in a serious, intentional, and sensitive way. We also hope that it is informative and we encourage you to have conversations with your child about their learning following the drill. As a side note, we want to emphasize that throughout this drill, the danger to student safety will be consistently referred to as a concern or a threat. In the drill, we first will discuss with students the importance of being aware of their surroundings. At the first sign of danger, they should stop, look, and listen. If a student has cause for concern, they should immediately stop what they're doing and assess the situation, taking a moment to observe their immediate surroundings for any signs of concern. They also need to listen for any sounds that may indicate that danger is nearby. If at any point in this process they feel like they are in danger from an active threat in the building, they need to act. We want students to feel empowered to respond, even if they do not have an adult directing them to do so. Once a concern is identified, it brings us to a run, hide, fight scenario in our response protocol. The first and best choice in responding to a concern is to run to safety. We want our students to run away from the danger and to exit our building if possible. As students leave our building, we want their focus to be on going in a direction away from the danger. Students were told of several meeting, uh, meeting points in our surrounding community to go to in the event that they have left our campus in an emergency such as this. After first responders have stopped the threat in our building, they will immediately proceed to those locations to meet our students. Because this video is able to be viewed by the public, we will not be identifying those locations here today, but we encourage you to talk to your child if you have questions. We now move on to the second step in the run, hide, fight protocol. In the event that a student is unable to run to safety because the threat is in their immediate vicinity, we want them to hide. They should find a place to hide and barricade themselves into that space. Once hidden, they should begin to plan how they can exit the building once the threat has left the immediate area. The very last option our students have if confronted with a threat they cannot run or hide from is to fight. At this point, students should do everything they can to keep themselves safe. In order to walk students through this progression, classes will complete a brainstorming drill that will have them plan for how they would respond should a threat enter a specific area of the building. For the initial part of the drill, we will brainstorm with the students on how they would respond if an active threat were near the outside of their classroom, which would initiate the hide portion of the drill. In this scenario, teachers will lead their students in locking down the classroom and begin planning with their class on how they could barricade themselves in and stay safe, as well as exploring alternate ways of exiting the room. In speaking to the hide portion of the drill, we will briefly mention that if there, if there were to be an immediate, in, imminent danger, the next step would be to fight. As we stated earlier in our message, we want our students to be prepared to do everything they can to keep themselves safe. While fighting is not something we will actively drill for, we will briefly discuss that it may become necessary as a last resort. At this point in our brainstorming session, we will then tell our students that the threat has moved away from their classroom and now we are to respond by leaving the building, initiating the run portion of the drill. For the run portion, students will discuss as a class ideas about how they could exit the school from their current location and where they would go after exiting. Teachers and classrooms will lead this activity in a structured and step-focused manner. Once the class has determined their safest path to the outside of the building, they will evacuate in a calm, structured, and teacher-led manner. Once they get a block away from our building, teachers will pause the class and discuss where they would go to in order to make it to one of our designated evacuation sites. At this point, students from all classes will then filter to a single site so we can gather as a school and go through our reunification process, where we will practice connecting our students back with their families. This reunification process is something we drill once every three years, and we would utilize it anytime we had a full school evacuation to an off-site location. 
if you would be interested in participating in our drill that day, then please contact Mr. Baranowski or myself and we will have you participate by picking up your child using the reunification process. In summation, by exploring each portion of the run, hide, fight protocol, students will be able to increase their understanding of how they would respond to a threat to their safety. This is not meant to be the end of a discussion, but the continued evolution of how we best keep our students and staff safe. As a school, we are continuously evaluating best practices for how we prepare for any potential danger. We prepare our students for many scenarios from natural disasters to the type of concern that we're discussing here today. As a parent, we hope you're reassured with our commitment to student safety and we welcome all questions you may have. We appreciate your time and thank you for your continued support.